I would call you a pretty self-hating black man, to be honest. For example, you make statements you like- You call me that? Yes, for sure. Oh, good. You call me that? Yes. What do you call me? A pretty self-hating black man. What the? Uh, yeah, listen. And, and why? It's not to me be offensive. No, I think no, no. It's just be a, offensive. Okay. And today, are you acting white or black right now? I'm acting like myself. But you sound white. I don't think I sound white No, you speak pretty white. Hello guys, what's up? Hi guys, I hope you guys are feeling good. Welcome back to the show now. This year, we keep it like real simple. I'm back again to a very interesting and amazing one by Jesse Lee Peterson, where he demolished black guests instantly. <laughs> this really gets so interesting where you see someone being dismantled, being destroyed, and <laughs> with no further ado, let's just bounce and let's see how this clip went. Let's go. Do you believe in uh, internal racism? Oh, absolutely. Internalized racism. Absolutely. Because you know, I read that in 2020, you put out a video mm -hmm. on internalized racism. Sure, it was a very painful experience. Yes. What is internalized racism? Well, for in my case, and I think it can vary from person to person, in my case, internalized racism kind of demonstrated itself in the sense that I had, I had all of these negative stereotypes, specifically about black people, that... Um, I realized it gave me this sort of mentality that I needed to to impress uh, white people. So then in, a cer in certain circles, I would change my way of speaking. Um, I would carry myself in specific ways so as to distance myself from what I consider to be blackness. And I felt that I realized that my, my, my doing that was based on a lot of these misconceptions and negative stereotypes uh, of black people. And I, I think that realizing that was really painful for me because it, it made me realize there was a part of myself that I was disliking. And so when you be around white people, you were at white? Uh, sure. I would maybe Is just change my, by? yeah, sure. I would change my diction, change my interests and, you know, kind of chameleon-like uh, fit in with white people while doing everything to distance myself from blackness. And then when you're around black people, you act black? Sure. And, I think it's what, called code switching. What way will you become black? <laughs> I think I changed my diction quite a bit. Um, I think my musical choices would be different. Um, I like all genres of music, except for like pretty much heavy metal. Um, but like, for example, I like country music. I wouldn't listen to country music around black people. I wouldn't like volunteer that I like country music back in the day. Um, just those kinds of things where it was just anything culturally black, I would, I would intentionally uh, just kind of distance myself from it. Really? And what made <laughs> you do that? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I was raised in a pretty white society, uh, the way I, where I, where I grew up, and I felt like I had experienced a decent amount of racism. And I think part of my response to avoid conflict was to just try to distance myself from blackness. Oh, I see. And today, are you acting white or black right now? I'm acting like myself. But you sound white. I don't think I sound white. No, at you all. speak pretty white. I think I speak, you speak intelligently, all correctly, and intelligent. Do you, do you and... not think black people can speak intelligently? No. Well, what am I? But I'm trying I'm to figure out person? now, are you being white with me or are you being black with oh, me? Oh, I speak like myself. So here's what but it you is. you sound white. Okay, I, I disagree with that. I think black people can speak r rather intelligently. Where are they? Uh, right here in front of you. No, other than you. My family, all of them. Oh, they act white? I don't think they act white. I think <laughs> they speak intelligently. I'd say this. So my mother, um, very college ed educated woman, she really instilled very much. And her father, who wasn't college educated, were really, really big on just speaking properly. And I think yeah. we grew up with this as like a, you know, part of just something that was necessary. We got chastised by other children for speaking white. Other black children. Other black children, for yeah. sure. And I think those sorts of things, it created some sort of distance. So in the sense that you start feeling like a, lo a loss of a sense of belonging because certain people are chastising you for speaking differently than yeah. they do. Especially being kids and growing up like Yeah, that. for sure. And I think you start internalizing a bunch of those things and you start feeling like, man, maybe I'm not black enough or maybe I'm, and all of those kinds of things. And um, so I think I've, I've overcome a lot of that. That's so do you identify thinking. more with white or black? I'm, I'm a black man and I identify with blackness. You do? You I just realized that girls? all of this is a black part of the black experience. Do you experience. date white girls? No, I do not. You don't, you don't date white girls? No, I date black girls exclusively. When you were white, did you date <laughs> white girls? Um, I, I don't think I was ever white, but I would say when I was around white people, um, I, found, I found everyone attractive. I think probably the last three years when I kind of moved more black exclusive. And so do you, at one time, you dated white girls? Were sure. you more white? Sure, I've been with white women. You've dated white women? Mm-hmm. Amazing. <laughs> Is it? I think, you know, they're women. 
What? Uh, they're women. They're just like anyone else. Do you date Mexican women? Oh my gosh, those were my favorite in high school. My Spanish used to be on point. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what is self hatred? Um, I would think self hatred is again. Oh my gosh, I think one of the easiest way of exemplifying it. There was this doll test that happened with these young children where they were doing like I think from like four to six to seven years old, and they had them answering questions about attributes of dolls, white and black. And the kids are able to immediately, like when they ask them about negative attributes, they assign those to the black dolls. But the thing that was the most harmful about one of those things I saw was there was a black kid, she was watch, she was doing the doll test, and she said um, that, like, so she was assigning all the negative attributes to the blackness, and then when they asked her, which doll more looks like you, she pointed to the black doll. So she was calling herself in that sense, like, you know, maybe indirectly mean mm. and bad and misbehave and all of these negative attributes. And I think that a lot of times black people can do that. I would call you a pretty self-hating black man, to be honest. Because, for example, you make statements You like, call me that? Yes, for sure. Oh, good. You call me that? Yes. What do you call me? A pretty self-hating black man. What the? Uh, yeah, listen. And, and why? It's not to me be offensive. No, I think no, it's no. Just be a, offensive. Okay. Well, all right. But it's just and, that and you why? say things like... I'm black and I'm slow, or I'm black and I'm dumb. And it's like you assign these negative attributes towards mm. black people, which are just not universally applied. We could look at white people in Appalachia and see something that would that we could see some pretty dumb white people there too. So when I, I think say dumbness I'm, is just a just a general thing that can apply to all humanity. When I say I'm black and slow, the black people think I'm talking about all blacks. I think when you say you're black and you're slow, you're, you're black and you're slow. We recognize that there are these stereotypes that already exist, and so then when you reaffirm that thing, your white audience views that thing and says to themselves, "See, so black people are pretty slow." <laughs> they tend to apply those things. So generally, you see, I when I say. say I'm black and slow, people will assume white that, people assign and black that to people all. Think I'm talking about all black people. Not, I, it's not. I, I recognize that you obviously have to know the difference between that, but I don't think everyone's thinking so deeply about it. And I would say that some of your constituency will assign those attributes across the board. And why do you think that? Because we already see that it happens on a regular basis. What do you mean by that? Well, for example, some of the times where you will mention things like criminality within black men, right, or criminality within whatever, and so you have these people that just automatically assume that black people in general are this way, um, and so then it's hard for people to distinguish between individuals when they're thinking generally. And I would but say that's But how do you why. know that that's what white people think though? Well, so there's a number of studies that have already suggested things like, uh, obviously when it comes to like hiring, there were studies that like demonstrated that even black and white people with the exact same resumes were, were when applying for a job, the black people were getting 50% less callback because black was, because some of these people in these positions have negative stereotypes about black people, which makes them feel like they shouldn't extend it to them the opportunity of, of their direct employment. So do you think that if black people were to stop being that way, being all mean and loud mouth and dirty and hating the whites and being there's that late, black hatred. I mean, there's that self-hatred I was talking being about. Being late. Hmm. Was and, I on time today? And complaining. Do you think if white people acted differently, the people, the, rest, the normal people would see them differently? I think black people already act differently. So we already recognize that black women are literally the some of the most um, educated demographic in the country right now by a percentage. We recognize already that, uh, again, criminality is not very common within black culture. It's disproportionately found in black culture. It's but very if we, common. It's disproportionately found in black it's culture. Disproportionately common. Disproportionately found in black culture. But do you think that the average black person as a criminal? Yeah. So you would say more than 50% right. of black people are criminals? Maybe a little bit more than that. Oh, my Lord. So, okay. Let so me ask you this I can see that lack of information is where that self hatred comes from. But let from. me come back to something. <laughs> um, <laughs> if black people were to act civilized, I think we do. do you think the rest of the world would see them in that way? I think black people act civilized. No, you're not asking the question. If they stop. Robbing and stealing, and the majority of black people don't rob and hating or cops steal. and or kill. and begging for affirmative action, and reparation, and free stuff. Mm. Would the rest of the world see them as normal people if they act normal? Do you think? Do you think? First off, I'm just going to say. The average black person doesn't steal. Criminality is still going to be the minority of African Americans. So if we take a hundred African Americans, not fifty percent of them are going to be criminals, right? So if black, so then that means the majority act, of them aren't criminals. If they were to act normal, would we see them differently? I don't, what do you mean by act normal? 
stop being blaming and begging and robbing and killing. And, so and the want, majority of black people don't they, rob, kill, when they go into or the schools, beg. When they want to get into the white schools, mm -hmm. we have to lower the standards to let them in because they said the SAT school oh, is white. Jesse, the, uh, who, everything is white. Who's the largest recipient of affirmative action? That's not what I asked you. Really quickly. No, I got you, but this is really, really related Please to what you're saying. That. Hold on. I need an answer for that. I got first. you. Just listen to this really quickly. No, 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 no. no. Okay, if go ahead. If they acted differently, would we treat them differently? I don't believe we'll that. I don't believe that black people act the way you're saying. So I can't. I don't understand. So that your question doesn't really seem well founded. You don't know we have to lower the standard to let them into the white schools. It's crazy that you say that when the largest recipient of affirmative action is white women. Did you know that? Do you know that we have to lower the standard to let the blacks in? Are we lowering the standard to let white women into you're school? Not answering the question. I don't, that's not the case. No, we don't lower it for the white women, just the black ones. I, I Listen, Jesse, I scored in the top 5% of my entire state. So I didn't, they didn't have but to lower any sort of thing. That, no, no, no. I, uh, yeah, I guarantee you, you didn't earn it. I outscored all of my state on state testing. I was in the top 5 percentile. Right. So while you might say that's affirmative action. that's not real though. What's not real? Because behind the curtain, they lowered the standard. They, they saw there was a black student. Oh. So they lowered it. <laughs> I don't think you have an accurate understanding <laughs> no, of how affirmative action Oh my God. At UCLA, they lowered the standard so low now you can't find your way out. Oh, so that Jesse, the blacks can get thing. in. Okay. I, listen, I'm sorry. You don't understand how affirmative action works. I don't know how to no, I don't I do understand it. how it works. You think that they lower, lower the standard. Do you think so they lower the test scores or they lower the standard for when Everything at this point. At, at so they, so was, they just raise the test scores of black kids? No, they lower it for the blacks. They bring it. Okay. I mean, they lower it for the whites and bring it up for the blacks. Like so the they, test scores. So they can pretend that the blacks are earning it. The test scores? Yes. Oh, okay. If it wasn't for affirmative action, blacks would not be in white schools. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I don't know how else to engage with it. I, I think uh, I, I outscored like the vast majority of white kids. I, I outscored the vast majority of the But that's hard to believe state. because you're black, and I know that. That's that self-hatred. I know that blacks are not earning their way. Oh, see, that's that internalized racism. You Why is that internalized to, to well, face because, reality? No, it's not I'll reality. face reality. Jesse. Who begged for affirmative action? So... Who begged for affirmative action? White women. They no. get it the most. They got it because they rot everybody use blacks to get what they want when they want dirty stuff, but who, what race is fighting for affirmative action? White women, because they get it the most. You're not being honest. I'm being completely honest. No, it's black people. Do you think that the- Where do you, do you live in America? Of course. You don't act like it. Huh? You don't act like it. How do I act? Like you don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my God, this is one of the most <laughs> most attractive conversation I've heard um, Jesse Lee Peterson. You know, I love wrong things, you know. I'm just so flagabasted and speechless at the same time. <sighs> black, white, black, white, kids, young adults. <sighs> I feel like, I feel like the, the, the amounts of what they are teaching the black kids it's it's what is causing them to be the way they are. The amount of things they are seeing, the amount of stereotype, stigmatization, parental stigma they are seeing, it's what is making them act the way they are acting. How can you ask a kid um, to pick between the white and black dolls and separate the one that is mean, that is more wicked, that is more harsh, and she picked the, the black dolls, and when they asked her what does she look like, she picked the black doll. Like, it's, it's so awful that we teach our kids the most wrong things, the most wrongest things ever. And hearing um, Jesse Peterson say these things, I, I, feel, I feel disappointed because why? Why can't you say they lower the standard? I, don't, I really don't know about it, but I feel like the black can also do what the white does. Like, the black can also do what the white do. Why should they lower the standard for the black for the blacks? I don't know how accurate that is, but if you if you know in the conversation, I would like to get it if it's if it's if it's factful, if it's if it's a right fact, if they really lower the standard for the black kids, because they are also human beings, same as the whites. Does that mean the whites are smarter than the black? I would really like to get that in the conversation, and I don't see why. The stereotype. And he said the blacks are dumb. Why? Why would the blacks be dumb? When the blacks do 
great and amazing stuff. I know the whites are actually like more of the practical aspect, like they go to space, they make scientific stuff, but the black is also good as well. Everyone have the aspect they are good in, but because the black is not good as the aspect the whites are good, doesn't mean you want to call the black dumb. No, damn, that's that's sick. <laughs> that's really sick because it made me feel like I'm a disappointed black, but no, I'm smart. I'm smart and my color doesn't limit me from going where I'm going. I'm smart, I'm bold and I'm intelligent, you know? And being in that circle of being black doesn't mean I can't reach my limits. I can reach my limits as being black. Same as if I'm white, I can reach my limits because I'm a person, I'm a person. It's, it's just so mind blowing. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, I'm really awful about this video, and I don't know. I'm gonna get this off my head because I f I heard stuff that made me want to feel bad as a, as being black, and I'll never feel bad as being black because I feel like it's God giving color, and I'm gonna be st I'm gonna stand out proud. I'm gonna do great things. I'm gonna do amazing stuff, and being black is good, and being white is also good. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. I'll be so happy to check your comment out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep watching and watch out for more. Peace and God bless you.